Podcast Network Asia. This episode may include topics, references, or discussions around sexual assault, domestic violence, stalking, physical violence, or subject matters that may be disturbing to some of our listeners. We do acknowledge that this content may be difficult. We also encourage you to care for your safety and well-being. Shocking, sad, revealing, and deeply researched. PH Murder Stories podcast covers the true account of infamous killings and true crime stories from the Philippines. There's no such thing as questions, just hidden answers. Stay tuned as we revisit the inconceivable crimes that exist. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence of all sorts. Viewer discretion is advised. The perpetrator in the hijacking of Philippine Airlines Flight 812 that happened on May 25, 2000 used the name Agosto Lacandula as his alias, committing one of the most bizarre hijacking incidents in history, as some would say the Filipino version of D.B. Cooper. For those who don't know, D.B. Cooper is a criminal who in 1971 hijacked a commercial plane traveling from Portland, Oregon to Seattle, Washington, and later parachuted out of the aircraft with the ransom money. Up to this day, nobody knows the real identity behind D.B. Cooper or whether he's still alive or not. He just mysteriously vanished. You are listening to the PH Murder Stories Podcast, and this is the 13th episode of Season 3. If you're a solid listener of PH Murder Stories, you may consider supporting our show by subscribing as a suspect or prime suspect at www.patreon.com slash phmurderstories or by giving us a 5-star rating on Spotify. Philippine Airlines Flight 812 departed the Francisco Bangoy International Airport in Davao City on the way to Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 2, also known as the Centennial Airport Terminal. It carries 278 passengers, 3 pilots, 9 flight attendants, and 2 cabin crew trainers. Seated in 28G was a man named Agosto Lacandula. As the plane was preparing to land at Naia, Lacandula, wearing a blue ski mask and swimming goggles, took out his handgun and grenade. Apparently, he was able to smuggle his weapons on board as he proceeded to where the cabin crew was seated. He aimed his gun at the head of flight attendant, Margaret Bueno, and announced the holdup. A trainer rushed to Bueno as Lacandula took Bueno with him on his way to the cockpit to demand his orders from the pilots. Forcing his way into the flight deck, Lacandula fired a shot into the aircraft bulkhead, all while another trainer ran to the rear of the plane to find Francis Cabell, the head of the cabin crew. The three pilots on board were Captain Butch Generoso, Navigator Captain Edwin Nadurata, and First Officer Caloineri. Lacandula had a handgun and grenade in each of his hands. Generoso described Lacandula as being very angry and very temperamental. Cabell, the senior flight attendant, instructed the cabin crew members to remain calm. At the cockpit, Lacandula faced Cabell, poked the gun at Cabell's head, and said, quote, Mamatay tayong lahat. Unquote. According to Generoso, Lacandula had said that his wife had an affair with a Davao policeman while other witnesses heard Lacandula say, Ginawa ko to para sa mga gagong pulis sa Davao. However, according to Cabell, 
Lakandula said that he did the hijacking for money, which is why Cabell took out the money from his wallet to give to Lakandula. Cabell even announced through the PA system for flight attendants to collect voluntary donations from passengers, making sure to avoid using the words hijacking or robbery to prevent panic. Lakandula demanded the pilots to turn the plane around to go back to Davao, but the navigator objected as the plane did not have enough fuel to make it all the way back. He then asked someone to get the backpack that he'd left in his seat. He emptied some of its contents and then put it in the backpack. Lakandula then instructed the pilots to take him to Samar. The pilots sensed Lakandula's confusion and saw this as a way to steer away from Manila and told him that they were in the province of Samar. As the plane flew over Antipolo City, Lakandula took out a nylon lavender-colored parachute from his backpack. Witnesses said it looked more like a repurposed tent, then later asked one of the pilots how to jump from the plane. Lakandula asked for the rear door to be opened, though it appears that he doesn't know the consequences of his actions. Doing so would cause rapid depressurization inside the plane, blowing out everything near the opening. One of the pilots objected to Lakandula's instruction, to which Lakandula said, Buksan mo ang pinto kung hindi papasabugin ko ang ulo ng stewardess na to. Wala na ang pamilya ko. Gaganti ako. Kailangan ko ng pera. Cabell volunteered to take Lakandula to the rear of the plane, all while having a grenade pressed to his neck and a handgun to his ribs. Passengers were instructed to look down. Upon reaching the back, Cabell radioed the pilots to disengage the locks on the rear door. The pilots depressurized the cabin to allow the rear door of the plane to be opened after descending to an altitude of 6,000 feet at the request of Lakandula. After opening the door, the wind knocked Cabell off his feet and held onto a harness for dear life. Lakandula was surprised by what had just happened and appeared to have second thoughts. According to Cabell, quote, Hindi niya akalaing bubuksan ko. Nagulat rin siya. Sabi ko ngayon, the door is open. Talon na. Unquote. And he came back to the rear door. The hijacker tried to jump out, but because of the wind, his body was half outside the plane and half inside the cabin, so he was unable to move. Cabell made a split-second decision as he saw that Lakandula, who no longer had the handgun, was still clutching on the grenade. A stewardess was afraid at the moment as the grenade Lakandula was holding on to might fall accidentally and go off inside the cabin. But Cabell appears to have had enough of Lakandula's antics. So he decided, in a heroic manner, to push Lakandula off the plane. Witnesses saw Lakandula get separated from his homemade parachute midair as he plunged to his death on a mountain in Real Quezon. His body was found buried in mud, with only his knees and hands protruding. The authorities also uncovered a driver's license in the hijacker's body belonging to Reginald Chua. Later, they would find out that Agosto Lakandula was only an alias the hijacker used to hide his real identity. In addition, The homemade parachute that Chua used was found one kilometer away from where his body was recovered. Though the belt bag filled with the money and jewelry he collected from his victims was not uncovered, sparking controversy. Subsequently, critics claimed that the police might have taken it, letting the hijacker take the fall. Reginald Chua's younger brother, Rani Chua, told reporters of the Radio Mindanao Network that his brother has always dreamed of becoming a skydiver but has not had the opportunity to jump from a plane before. The Chua family claims that Reginald was deeply hurt after their father was murdered in 1993 due to a business rivalry and has yet to be solved. The hijacker's mother said that her son wanted to make huge amounts of money so he could move the family far away from the area where his father got killed because he couldn't bear to see the people behind his father's murder roam free. 
Meanwhile, authorities in Davao have investigated how Reginald Chua got to board the plane with his weapons. There had already been several security problems at the Davao airport. Investigators discovered that there were no walkthrough metal detectors and the x-ray machine was not functioning at the time. So the guards had to conduct manual checks. Chua could have bypassed security as there was no fence around the airport. Regardless of the reason why Reginald Chua hijacked the plane, incidents like these should have been avoided if the airport security just did their jobs more thoroughly. Excluding the hijacker, there were no other casualties from the 277 passengers and 14 crew members on board the Philippine Airlines Flight 812, but they would never forget this traumatic experience. Thank you for listening to PH Murder Stories. If you like this episode, give us a 5-star rating on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can also support our show on Patreon. Any amount you donate would benefit our team to keep doing what we love, which is to provide more true crime episodes for our listeners. Link in the description. For further updates from our show, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at PH Murder Stories and subscribe to our YouTube channel at PH Murder Stories The views and opinions expressed by the podcast creators, hosts, and guests do not necessarily reflect the official policy and position of Podcast Network Asia the hosts of the program or other programs of the network Any content provided by the people on the podcast are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.